right, what's up, y'all? Rodney James here. I'm with a, a guy who's fighting on UFC 246. That's January 18th here in Las Vegas. Of course, I'm talking about the fight that's headlined by Conor McGregor and Cowboy Cerrone. Anytime that Conor McGregor is in town, or Cowboy Cerrone for that matter, uh, it's a big deal. How excited are you to be on this card, man, fighting in Las Vegas? Um, I'm pretty excited, man, but I'm like, I'm, I'm past excitement. You know, you've been after, uh, cause I've known about this fight for a while now. So, you know, I was excited for the first two months, but then after, you know, after a while it goes like, it goes in levels. You get excited then you're like, okay, all right, I'm ready. I'm ready to fight. <laughs> I know what you, you know, mean. So I know I'm, what you I'm mean. I'm very, I'm very, ex I'm very excited though to be on this card. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. It's a roller coaster, isn't it? When you find out who you're fighting, it's just like, it's hard to keep your mind off of it because you're motivated. On your best day, you feel like a killer. You know, you're in the gym, you have a good session. On your worst day, when you get into your head, you're like, oh, fuck, man. Like, this is a big moment, man. Yes, man. I know exactly what you, you're talking about. It's like you've been there. <laughs> it's exactly it. On you, like you said, on your, wor on your worst days, man, you're just like, man, like, shit. You know, and everyone has that, like, that oh, shit moment, you know. Because I think on the outside of fighting, you have these awesome days every single day where you're just a killer in the gym. And that's not true. That's like a facade that I think everybody has. Yeah, well, I do kind of. I have been there. I, I, I posted a 2 and one record, but I'm not, you know, I haven't committed to a full career. I'm too old at this point. But that's why I have an extra added respect for y'all, man. I do know what what that roller coaster is like and that fight camp and the weight cut and all that. It's horrible. But listen, I was talking to um, another contender series season three alumni who just fought here in Las Vegas at the, uh, at the last card, Puna uh, Soriano and also uh, Chase Hooper. And man, I was telling these guys like, you know, for anyone who thinks that y'all get an easy road because you didn't have to go through all of the, uh, uh, what not contender series, but uh, damn ultimate fighter. <laughs> It's almost yeah. a, a forgot. It's all, yeah. It's almost forgotten at this point. But no, it, you know, you guys didn't have to go through that whole process. But the thing is, when they put you in the UFC, y'all do not get, uh, you know, an easy road. They throw you right into the deep end. They're not putting y'all against yeah, other contenders. They're putting you no against established thing. veterans. Exactly, and there's no such thing as an easy road. You know what I mean? There's all the uh, the sweat and tears and blood that was shed leading up to those points, there's no such thing as an easy road. So anybody that thinks that's an easy road can go kick rocks because I know all the the crying and the pain and the suffering that I did to get up to this point. So, shit, I don't give a fuck what they got to say about that. There's no such thing as an easy road to get to where that point is. If you get to where that point is, where Dana White, you know, um, calls you on contender series, you 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 are you've earned it. Yeah, it's great. Like I said, you know, you, you would you would almost think they would put other contenders, maybe that got contracts or what have you, or other sort of up and comers, but that's not been the case. You know, Puna was against a guy who was a former Cage Warriors middleweight champion and it knocked him out. I don't know if you saw that one; it was brutal. And then Chase Hooper was no, against David Tamer and almost got finished. I mean, this kid's like twenty years old, and he's in there with a freaking stud. And with you, you got Brian Kelleher, a guy who's been a champion in other organizations ton of experience you know he got about 20 wins and uh you know he's coming yeah. off of two losses both finishes but in a way I kind of th I think that makes him a little more dangerous because he kind of has to know hey I got to get in here and I gotta I have to win at all costs yeah most definitely he definitely has to win at all costs and uh I think that's you know I think they I think they want to test me to see what I got you know and I love that because I, I love a good test I love a good challenge I love all of the the pressure of everything. I don't, I I don't really let pressure become me. I try to block everything out. So um, my mind is is like a, a stoic mountain or a rock, and I think they really try to see what you're about. You know what I mean? They're like, okay, let's let's put him in there and you know against a tough guy and see what he's let's see let's see what he's really about. You know what I mean? And so I like it, man. It's a good it's a good test. Yeah, no, and and I was just thinking too. A lot of guys, younger guys, would probably think, and, and you can you can actually reflect on this now that you've gotten into the pinnacle, you know, into the UFC. 
it, it's not the finish line. It's you're literally that's just where you're getting started because now exactly you made it, exactly. but you I'm, you're trying to get to the gold. Yeah, I'm not trying to go in there and have this three round fight and win by like a decision or unanimous decision or whatever. I'm trying to go in there and finish him in like the first round. And not just him. I'm trying to go in there and finish everybody in the first round. That's where mine's at. Um, I don't. I'm not. I didn't just get to the UFC just to get to the UFC. I, I want. I came here to be a champion. I'm not trying to just go in here and have these. You know, these 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 fights just last. Like I'm trying to go in here and just devour people. Like like make it look easy. You know what I mean? I love it. I love the attitude, and that is exactly why I was at all ten weeks of Contender Series uh, this season at the new facility. How amazing was that? The apex. Oh man, it was awesome. It was it was it was definitely like surreal. It was surreal, man. Like I said, I came <laughs> just being here. I was like just being here in this facility by itself was so just wow. Coming from like just you know coming from nothing to being at in Vegas and first of all that was like wow that was mind blowing for me. Like you know what I mean? Just that was just uh, I I, I was your first, that was your first time point. out here. Yeah, first time in Vegas. And you get to come back to make your debut in the UFC. So that's interesting you said that the fight has been booked for a couple of months. Um, Because, yeah, I felt like it took a while because I was waiting. There were a few standouts in this whole – and you were one of them in this whole season, you know. And I thought, man, okay, I'm seeing some of the other guys start to make their debuts. Where the hell is Odie Osborne? So did some other fights – maybe materialize and then fall through or what, what kind of happened? You know, I really don't know because I was thinking that said, I was thinking that same thing myself. I was like, man, like, I'm like, you know, Dana said he liked my performance. I talked to him afterwards, you know, he came up and he, you know, he commended me really well. I was like, and they're not putting me on any cards anytime soon. You know, there must, so um, for me, I was like, oh, I'm just going to be patient. You know what? I didn't ask my manager about it. I didn't ask my coaches about it. I just, you know, trusted in God and let, God do his thing and just be patient as possible. And I was just like, you know what? It's it's gonna happen and I'm gonna end up on something good. So I'm just gonna let it let it go by. And I, I, I waited and sure enough, got on this great card. So I think you know, they were trying to put it, put some good people on this card. Yeah, well and I think I'm one of them. I think Yeah, for sure, man. No, uh I'm excited. You're uh, and, and you're gainfully employed too. That that allows you to be patient. Um, because you're a school teacher, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I am. I sure. <laughs> I bet am. those kids listen to you. I Man, mean, not not that you could threaten them with time. violence, but I mean, I'm sure just the aura of being a cage fighter is enough to get their respect. It is, but a lot of the, it is. But I, I tell people this all the time. It's different, man. It's different when you got like suburban kids versus like inner city kids. You know what I mean? Like, I work with inner city kids. And they don't give a shit. They don't give a damn, really. They're just like, all right, that's cool. <laughs> you know, like, they, they're just like, they do whatever they want to do and say whatever they want to say, how, <laughs> you know, when, when they get upset. No matter, regardless of what it is, they just, wow. you know what I mean? It's because they, they're, they're exposed to everything and anything. So, you know, I got to have to get a level above that. You know what I mean? I really have to, to be um, Ode Osborne, the mentor or Ode Osborne, the father or Ode Osborne, the, uh, the educator instead of Ode Osborne, the fighter. You know what I mean? I think that's where you really touch them is by being Ode Osborne, the, the lover. You're an interesting guy, man. You're an interesting guy. And so, uh, and you're Jamaican. Yeah. But you live in Wisconsin. Yep. I was, yep. I was born in Jamaica. I came to the States at the age of nine. Yeah, man. <laughs> you go back. Yep. You ever go back? <laughs> yeah, man. Respect. <laughs> so we've got what Aljo we've got uh who else oh wait Aljo might he might be from somewhere else but Uriah there's a, Hall you know, um, who there's else a, there's a couple up and coming uh Jamaicans that I've been you know we've been keeping I've been keeping contact with and keeping an eye on that you know I, I really respect and you know we, we we chat every once in a while but there's one there's a guy that's called his name is uh he goes by the real Jamaica funk I don't know if you've ever heard of, heard of him no but I, I want to that's a great name yeah, man. To keep it, yeah, man. Uh, PBM, he's, he's he's a he's a he's a cool dude, man. He's slick. He's finishing people out there. He's a, he's. I think he'll be in the league pretty soon. You ever you ever um, meet Uriah guy, Hall? The, no, I never meet Uriah Hall. I never met him. I never really met him. 
Yeah, may, maybe you'll see him around in uh, Las Vegas when you're here. Because, well, he used to train with us over at Extreme Couture. I think he's still around, but he's over at Fortis in my man, Dallas. Um, so, yeah, when you were here before, what was it like going to the UFC PI? I know going there for the first time, even the first few times, it's freaking overwhelming how awesome that play. We talked about the Apex, but let's not forget about the Performance Institute. Man, I was just taking everything in. Like, ask anybody there. Ask all the the uh the workers and the you know people that were facilitating everything i was like i was just like being extra i was just like taking pictures with everything i was like man <laughs> forget the ufc fighters i didn't take a picture with any ufc fighter i didn't care i don't care about the fighters but i was taking pictures with all all the you know all the objects and like just i was mine it was so surreal like I, like I tell you it was super surreal man you have no idea when you come from taking a dump in an outhouse bathroom and taking a shower outside <laughs> to being in a facility like a PI like that, where they got you know uh, chefs that cook you cook you food in the cafeteria, to masseuse, they got machines that they hook up to you and tell you pretty much how many times you blinked in the past month. <laughs> this shit is crazy <laughs> to me still. <laughs> they yeah. Got the, the, uh, the hot pool and the cold pool and the pool that'll make your bank account go up. <laughs> you nice. know they got everything. I was just I was blown away, man. I was like just like I was like wow. Like, you know, and I, all the people that I, were with, I was with were, you know, they saw, like, all the uh, UFC fighters, and there were some big-name fighters that walked through, and they were getting pictures with them, and I was like, man, I don't give a damn about them. Like, I, I'm looking at all this, this, I'm taking up, I'm taking all this in. Like, people are people to me. I really don't give a shit about, you know, meeting fighters and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. People are people. We're all people. I don't give a damn about that. But I, the, the, um, what I, what I care about, though, is, is the atmosphere and the um just just the environment and the culture of everything and being there and just taking all that in for me was was such a great feeling like i was just like mind blown i i love what you said i want to go back a step here a couple steps i love what you said about the the philosophy sort of of dana and the matchmakers when they're putting guys into these contender series fights again i told you i was there for all of them i'm a big proponent i'm always I'm I'm always just singing the praises of that show, of what they're doing with it, of the fighter, of the talent that, that we're able to cultivate, you know, in that pressure cooker. Um, because you get it. I see so many guys that go out there and, and lay an egg or they just kind of like, they don't fight to finish. They fight to win. Yeah. And I go, you, yeah, can't, just, you can't do that. That's not what Dana no. wants, man. I, I understand what he wants very, um, you know, I have a very good understanding because I've heard him articulate it so many times and I've been right there in the room with him and, I, you know, I've seen him on TV. You uh, you hit it right on the head, though. You said, look, they're going to put this – they want to put this guy in here, see what can he do, what can you do. We're going to put you in a situation yep. to say it's do or die. You want this job? Yep. This is your job interview. Get in there. Beat that guy's ass. If you could do that, yeah. we, we might yeah, we might could talk. To... If you go in there and act For like real, you're scared, yeah. People out here... we can't gamble on you. I know, right? People out here trying to play patty cake and shit. They're out here like twiddling their thumbs, you know, trying to make rounds last and and try to hold people down. I'm trying to like if you're not if you're trying to win rounds by point, what the why the fuck are you fighting? Why are you why did you become a fighter? Did you become a fighter to last? I'm a fighter by heart, by nature. You know, my I bet you my ancestors were pillaging village, you know, pillaging villages and 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 doing some crazy shit. You know what I mean? Like I'm a fighter by heart, by nature. I'm not out here to be like Lacks of diesel, like all my fights, even even the even the fights that I, I've lost, the two fights I've lost, I guarantee you, both my opponents I've lost to were like, man, I don't want to fight that guy again ever. You know what I mean? Like good. they'd never want to fight me again. Good. It's it's good to see um, a Jamaican prospect coming up too. You know, it's you you guys are underrepresented in the sport. I feel like that could change with time because a guy like you. You talked about being a mentor to the kids, but I think for a whole nation, you might be able to to really be inspirational. And that, that's huge, man. That's a fucking big deal. Because if you look at 2019, right, it's a huge, huge year for African fighters, which I – Yeah, man. I was just very uh, – you know, I was very stoked to see that because, again, very underrepresented um, demographic, but a lot of potential talent in there. You just got to raise the awareness and, and build up that brand appropriately because yeah. we, we talked about this a lot, man, me and my boys. And I talked about this in the barbershop too. You know, a lot of people still think 
MMA is this crazy white boy sport, but it's, it's, <laughs> I know, it, I know. it's, it's really funny. not. Thought, You're starting yeah. to see it's, extremely high level athletes, fun. NFL no, athletes, it's, it, wrestlers. It it's no, for real. And I think, um, you know, it's, it's crazy because like you said that I'm, uh, Usain Bolt is the fastest man on land and I'm about to be uh, the fastest Jamaican in, in the octagon. You know what I mean? And, um, I think people sleep on that because like you talk about, you know, talk about African Americans, like our DNA is, is, it's, it's crazy. Um, people make jokes that, you know what I mean? Um, you know, black people are athletic, like it's true. We are we're like, we're, we're real, you know, athlete. like it's our DNA. It's, it's just, I don't, I don't know what it is, but something, it's it just like, I think it's, it's deep rooted. Yeah. It makes us really, you know, our drive, our, our, and it's not just, it's not just about our athleticism, it's about our mind, you know, it's where we came from. It really is where we came from. Literally outside every day, running in the streets, you know, running like, we used to go outside and just race every single day. And we go outside and, you know, we, we would fight each other, like, not like, not um, like, uh, we, we hate out of hatred, but out of fun. Like, we go outside and, man, growing up, all we did was fight. That's all we did. We used to go outside and just fight. We put... Like, no joke, we, we used to go outside and just fight. Like, it was just fun for us. Because that's the thing. I think people see MMA as this, like, violent, vicious sport. Um, people forget that men are men. We, we, we're we men. We're, we're, we, we're, that's what we do. We put two men in a room for a long time. Eventually, you know, testosterone is going to take over. And that's what we do. We fight because it's it's something that we, we enjoy to do. It's not, it's not that we hate each other or whatever. You know what I mean? I don't hate anybody that go in. When I go into uh, the cage to fight, I don't, I don't hate that. I don't, I don't hate that person, or have no animosity towards that person. I fight out of love and passion, and my my drive for fighting and that DNA that's deep rooted within me comes out. You know what I mean? And uh, <clears throat> it's terrifying. It's terrifying for um, a lot of reasons. It's terrifying for me because, like, when I'm when I'm in there, I'm just I get that like I get that. Uh, almost like a stoic look on my face, right? Where I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm not even there anymore. I'm just, um, I'm out of it. It's like when you, when you are, uh, when you're birthed, when you, when you gave, when your mom gave birth to you, and you've never been touched by human interaction, right? And you've never been um, influenced by anybody, and you're just pure. That's how I feel when I'm in there. I feel like that's the for the uh, for the first time in my life, like I'm, I'm reborn again. Where I'm in that cage, I've never been touched by human interactions or um influenced by anybody i'm just pure and i get into this, in this zen where everything is just phased out and i get to just be myself um be that what what whatever god wanted me to be i'm just that that thing i'm not even a, it's, it's weird i'm, I'm a very like spiritual when i'm in there it's just not you know what i'm saying it's just not like i think people fight with so many um they i think a lot of people think that you have to be angry you have to be mad i don't i don't as a case i think you just go in there and um you just flow because for me, it's like I, you shouldn't be thinking about all these techniques. Really, you shouldn't. I think techniques is for um, pad work, bag work, and for your teammates in the gym. When you spar and when you fight, you shouldn't think about any technique. Everything should just be. You should just be able to be yourself. That's why I consider myself the Picasso of MMA because it's it's an art. It's an art. You know, you're 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 in there just being an artist and you're feeling whatever comes natural. You shouldn't uh, all the technique that you've um, done in the gym that should come out on fight night. You shouldn't have to think about it. You rep those technique so that you can just go in that go in there and just flow all those technique and just create your own um, painting. Man, this guy gets it. You really do. I'm telling you, man, I, I noticed that. And I'm not just saying it because you're here. You and Tracy Cortez, I, I said, man, and there's probably a few others. I mean, there's so many fighters. I have to go back and, and Tony Gravely is another one. He, he actually fought my buddy. Yeah. Um, he, he's going to be, he's going to be a bit, Brock Weaver is going to be a big deal. You, man. Yeah, I, I, I was peeping him too. He's, he's a, he's a, I was peeping him for sure, man. He's a trip, yes, man. <laughs> he, he's a trip. Yeah. I like that yeah. guy. I like that guy mm -hmm. a lot. But, you know, I, I looked at you guys and I go, not only do you stand out because of your performance, but just your personality and your attitude. I mean, that I'm in your corner. I want, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see you guys get the shine finally. Cause I feel like with contender series, it's great. 
but it's also sort of for the really hardcore MMA bubble. With a fight like a Conor McGregor fight, you're getting so many more eyeballs right now, and this is your moment to shine. Yeah, and I and I've said this before, man. My my old trainer used to, you know, rest his uh, rest his rest his soul. Um, he, my old trainer used to say this: the best fighters are not in the UFC, and I believe that solely, heavily. The best fighters are not in the UFC until now, <laughs> because <laughs> I, <laughs> I believe um, I have this like. I don't know why, and you know what I mean? It's probably gonna give me a lot of shit for saying this, but I'm gonna say it anyways. I believe that um, a lot of fighters just have, I, I feel like the talent level has gone down a lot, and a lot of fighters just have this hype build up so much around them, so that, you know, whenever, like, say a fighter like Conor McGregor beats, like, knocks him out or, or, or kills, crushes somebody, right? I don't believe that that person really is is that great of a fighter. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just believe that the UFC has not seen true potential yet. I, I think I think that they're just, like, they're just average. And when you beat somebody that's just average, you, you, you know what I mean? I think that when people see me fighting, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to open up a whole, like, oh, shit, that, that guy is a, a, a real prophecy. Holy shit, okay, that is what a fighter actually is. You know what I mean? It's like a whole nother level that... I think people have not experienced. So every once in a while, you get the like the Anderson Silva, the Conor McGregor, the Jose Aldo, the you know what I mean. Every 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 what uh, decade those fighters come around and you, you kind of people get shocked by it. But really, I don't I don't I haven't seen that yet. Um, I think as of late, there's been a lot of a lot of a lot of fighters that people think that it's there but really if you study what how they are and you study their their personality and it's just it's just all fluff mm -hmm. really you know yeah, what I mean? a lot it's of all divas. Fluff. there's a lot of divas yeah. around these days yeah yeah people want to cherry yeah. pick fights and you know it, it, yeah it's all politics yeah you gotta love really the... for real i'm trying to fight the best i'm trying to shit if i'll be i'll be happy i'm trying to fight cejudo right now like you know what i mean like i'm i ain't trying to be out here trying to like Oh well, um, I'm, I'm gonna turn that guy down and that guy down. No, you're trying to be a you, you're if you're truly innately born a fighter, like you truly want to fight because for me, I want to fight because um, I got my my I got kids that from my school that look up to me and and kids in the community that I, I want to inspire. Um, I really don't give a shit about the the audience or the fans or whatever i do on that on, on some levels because they they make you know what i mean if it wasn't for the fans there would be no ufc but say something say i did something bad right you know what i mean i, I always say if i so if i did something bad which i hope i never do if i did something bad and then i got you know the fans are like oh man i can't believe you did this i can't I'm like i don't give a damn about what they think because they were never in me they were never in the gym with me when i had to do all that i had to do to get where i'm at today so i don't fight for them i, I really don't i fight for all, all the kids in my school that, um, not just my school, I, I'm going to stop saying that. All the kids in general that um, are put down every single day by people um, that tell them they can't do something. Because I, I dropped out of college, you know what I mean? And people gave me shit about it. And I, I, I'm going to say to to all the kids that are put down every single day because they want to do something and people around them constantly tell them like, oh, you ain't never going to be this because of where you came from. That's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I fight. To make that, I, I need a platform. Really, that's really that's really it. I need I need a large platform, and in order to get that platform, I know I gotta be I gotta be a champion to get that platform. Um, that's why I'm I'm in it because of that. No other reason, not because of the money, not because of the fame, not because of all any of that. And, and uh, I always tell people, you fight me just because you want to get um, a, a check. Shit, you you gonna lose because <laughs> I'm fighting for for everything beyond that. He doesn't give a damn about fortune and fame. He He's all about honor and integrity. That is fucking outstanding. Odie Osborne, I'm honored that you gave us your time today. And uh, we need to continue this conversation when you're in Las Vegas. I know you're going to be busy, but uh, yeah. we'll probably run into one another. I want to show you something. Uh, I got a caveat to what you were saying about, you know, people thinking. Because I was noticing that, too, about you, your your attitude. We talked about your approach to fighting but your approach to the fight itself the way that you just kind of keep yourself in a good mood and stay happy and and you made a comment about how like 
you know, I've always felt it was a defense mechanism for people who like, oh, I got to be angry and like, I'm, you know, yeah. cause like I, my, yep. my coach even told me my first fight at the weigh-ins, he goes, Hey, he pulled me aside actually. And he was like, Hey, he's like, I seen your opponent, man. He's running around. He's like, he's like, dude, if he looks at you, man, you fucking just, you mean mug him right back. And if you fucking says something, <laughs> and I was like, dude, no, <laughs> like no. we don't need to do all that. We don't need. Uh -uh. So let me ask you this. When did you guys do the face offs? Whenever uh, you did your weigh ins for contender series, because I know they changed it up mid season on account of me, because I asked Dana White, how come we're not doing that? Because that is, I feel, an important part. That's where the fight starts. Did y'all do it or no? No, we didn't do it. We didn't do the face off. We didn't do the face off. They uh, ended up, so, so they ended up changing it later on because af after one of the fights, I asked Dana White, I said, how come we're not doing face offs? If you're doing weigh ins, we might as well face them off. And I tell you, man, my first fight, dude, I, I all my boys kept telling me, like, man, that dude looks scared. He looks like he's scared. And I'm like, well, okay, he's kind of intimidating, so I don't – whatever. But as soon as we faced off and I looked in his eyes and I saw how he was, like, he was trying to, like, you know, he was, like, trying yep. to make me intimidated and shit. He was, like, in my face like this, mm -hmm. and I was just stoic. Well, I mean, yeah. he, here's he, here he goes right before he got – choked out so <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so my my point is yep. it doesn't matter my second fight i'm hanging out back i'm getting warmed up i'm nervous as fuck i'm listening to my music i'm stretching out my opponent kicks me I look up he said hey man he said i know it's kind of awkward for people to talk to each other before a fight. He said, man, but, but uh, can we get a selfie? He's like, man, you, you look just like John Cena. I want a selfie with you. <laughs> yeah. So I said, <laughs> I said, fuck it. Why not? Took yep. a selfie. 30 minutes later, I'm, I'm in there trying to beat his ass. That's what I'm saying, man. Yep. You, you just articulated that well. It's like, dude, it's not about, dude, just get in there and win the fight. I remember one of my coaches asked me before that first fight, he's like, He's like, all right, we got to tailor a game plan for you. What are you, like more of a – are you a striker or a grappler? Why does it always have to be a dichotomy? It's not. I it, know. It's This for is real, a fight. Though. I told him. For I looked real. at him and said, I said, I, I'm a fighter. That's what I am. I'm neither a grappler or a striker. I'm going to win wherever I can win. So if I can grapple yes. better, I'm going to grapple yes. you and I'm beat your ass. Yep. If I can strike better, I'm going to I'm gonna knock you Dude, out. Dude, that's so – that's that's 100% because I grew up – I grew up wrestling. I wrestled in college. I wrestled in high school. You know what I mean? But my hands are clean. My my submission game is clean because I practice all my crafts. I'm not a wrestler. I'm not a kickboxer. I'm not a jits, you know, expert. I'm I'm a martial artist. Exactly, man. Yeah, you, you got to find. And like you said, man, when you're in there, never mind technique. Like those that one, two, three, four. You know, uh, one, two, and a high kick, and all these yeah. that, that shit doesn't. You got to just fucking throw. <laughs> you got yes, what, yes. You got to yes. throw. You what's gotta, available? You got to look for the openings. Like I tell you know, I'm gonna fuck it. You know, I, people are always like, why are you giving? You know, why are you giving people your secret? People gonna people always say like, oh, you shouldn't say this when you do these interviews or. Uh, whenever I got people come and film me, oh, do you want me to cut this this when I film you because I don't want I want people to get to get what you're doing. I'm like, it don't matter what people see or what I what they hear from me. It's a it's you're fighting. Uh, you can't fight my my reactions. You don't know what I'm gonna do. You know what I mean? It's one thing if you study film on me. It's another thing having that animal in front of you. It's a completely different thing. Um, and I think people always try to like you said bring out this like oh this tough guy. You don't you don't fear that guy. The guy you fear. As the guy that looks at you dead in your eyes, or not fear, but the guy you respect, I should say, you looked at you dead, look at you dead in your eyes with no emotions, just right. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah, you know that's that's the guy that can that can block out everything. Yeah, that's a true fighter. That's a true fighter. Like he's a, yeah, he's not going to be rattled either. You know, you could tell. And like I said, that's where the fight starts. You look into a guy's eyes. You know, you fucking know. You could tell. You look in a guy's eyes. Like okay. This motherfucker is just as crazy. Yeah, man. You can see the fear, or you can say, okay, this guy's just as crazy yep. as me. Jo uh, <laughs> Joanna Jinjaychik and Rose Namajunas, prime example right there. Prime example. Joanna, you know, she every 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 face off, she came at Rose with that, you know what I mean? That aggression, that like, you know, killer look. Rose was just stoic on the face off. She was Rose was stoic. Oh, what and a national treasure. How do you not love her after after that story? So. Yeah. <laughs> So, Ode Osborne, Ode Osborne. I hope I said that right. Ode, it's all good, man. I, it, I don't give a shit. Ode. It's kind of close to Ozzy Osborne. Are you you friend, fans of Black Sabbath? 
minus minus the the drugs and the and the, you know and all. <laughs> he's good. He's good, man. He's he's talented. Yeah. One of my favorites. Well, um, look, it's been great chatting with you on this Sunday. Um, I know we got to get going. My Cowboys are are playing, and uh, it's it's not looking good for our playoff hopes. And then I think you're. Green Bay Packers have already locked in the division, so like they always felt, do. Yeah, man. Um, to be completely honest with you, man, I fell off of football like years, and it's you know like I have nothing against football or anything. Um, for me, people always message me like always are like, "Hey, man, did you watch the Packers play last night? Hey, man, did you see the Bucks game? Hey, man, did you watch uh, Kobe Covington, uh, Kobe Covington and, and Usman. Hey man, did you watch the lot your opponent and see his film? Hey man, I'm like, man, man, I got kids on on like failing tests, and I got kids to inspire here. I don't give a fuck about the, the, the UFC fights or the Bucks game or the Packers game. You know, I got, I got shit to do. I, I, don't got, t- I don't got time for that. I could take, I could take a lesson for you, from you, man. Yeah, I spend way but too no, much but time you, but doing all that. But that's your job, though. You're a, you're a, that's <laughs> your job, though. This is your job. Your job is revolved around sports. True. You know what I mean? Like, you, you're, that's, that's, that's what you do. You know what I mean? But, but if you, you know, if you in your mama's basement watching sports, and doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> yeah, those days are gone. I wish, man. I told you I'm too old. Um, so where can we find you on social media in between now and your official UFC debut January 18th, UFC 246? I try to keep it all the same, man. Everything is at O'Day Osborne, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. I don't really use Twitter that much. Everything is linked to my Twitter. So I, everything I post goes to Twitter. But um, it's Instagram mainly at Oday Osborne, Osborne, O S B O U R N E, aka the Jamaican sensation or the Picasso of MMA, whatever you want to call it. The Picasso of MMA, the Jamaican sensation. That's him. Oday Osborne got the contract on Contender Series Season 3, making his official debut against an absolute stud in Brian Boom Boom Kelleher. Man, that is just, this whole card is just awesome. I've heard people saying it's, uh, you know, not that great. Listen. It's great. Trust me. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss this guy's fight. Um, if you missed him on Contender Series, go back on Fight Pass and watch that amazing uh, first round armbar finish that you got to earn that contract. And again, man, I can't say enough. Thank you, brother. I mean, it's been a great conversation with you, and I definitely look forward to the future. 